welcome to another episode today. I am very excited to welcome today's guest. He's a true superstar. Milos is here with us. He really doesn't need much introduction from me. He's a superb classical guitarist uh, and an artist that I deeply admire and have great respect for, not only for his artistry, but also for his genuine kindness and compassion and his pioneering approach. And also most importantly, his honesty and openness about sharing his personal experiences and also discussing very real and important issues that we face. Welcome Milos, so happy to have you with us. It's wonderful, wonderful to see you, Esther, and it's great to be part of this uh, project. Has your relationship with your instrument changed? Like, has it, uh, I'm sure there's been moments where it has helped you through these times, but um, what do you think about that? Oh, 100%. And, and there are moments, actually, when in the morning I wake up and even if I'm, like, feeling really heavy psychologically, uh, I just think, let's just let's just create some beauty and let's just be part of that beauty and, 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 and hear this, this sound. And I mean, last couple of weeks, I've been working on, on some, some Bach pieces I played a long time ago and on some Albanian transcriptions. And, and I just, you know, I was really, really inspired by that. Uh, but it's, this has been going on for a really long time. So it took me a very long, long time and many months to actually understand that when I'm at home, I'm not on a holiday. Uh, because <laughs> normally with the schedules that we have, you are only at home when you are not working. To actually uh, come to grips with the fact that actually, no, now you need to work at home. Uh, this, was, this has been really, really hard. There have been weeks when I didn't touch the guitar. And, and I think that um, uh, on one hand, it can be greatly liberating and also uh makes you think of yourself not only defined by what you do which i think is very healthy um but it's also um uh, also being strange you know like it's like who am i if i don't have my instrument and my concerts and my audience and my crazy wonderful life all of these new digital platforms and performances mm. happening during the pandemic but that we hear some pe many people are saying that this will continue and kind of be the future of classical music. Mm. And there are, you know, many mixed opinions about this because obviously it, it's very clear to state the pros, but not many people mention the cons of this. And this is something I wanted to discuss with you. We are really, really going straight into it because actually one of the uh, things I, think the most about is exactly this, because I feel that we are um, living and seeing through a huge shift and change, not only how this whole world functions, but how our world uh, will function in the future. Um, and I'm someone who is very sensitive to what it means to actually be an artist. Uh, and when I think of, um, my heroes and when i think of their experience 30 40 years ago and when i compare them to my experiences over the past 10 years before the pandemic it's already such a huge difference and a huge shift because we had we've been expected to play more concerts than was ever expected from any artist we've been expected to share details of our life beyond music maybe not so much but like some of it, which I always found a bit difficult. And also, um, we, we have been, unlike our heroes from different to different, three different generations before us, we had to try always so hard to be liked and to, to kind of, there are so many layers of a career. It's not just about how you play or what repertoire you play or what your way is, what your little special way with it is, but it's just so many other things. It's almost like you, you're expected to create a lifestyle around your name and a brand around your name and all that. And, uh, and I feel that now this is going to be even more in the focus. And actually, I don't envy the younger generation of musicians. I actually can't imagine how difficult it must be 
for a 19 year old violinist in the first year of college to be working on Bach's Chacon uh, because how can they understand the depth of those notes and of those lines if they don't have the discipline to switch off for four, five, six hours, but not switch off, but really switch off to actually be one with the music and with the composer and with, with the whole art. Well, I guess that's also, you know, where each person's life goals or aspiration or their perspective lies because as as you mentioned having a very clear vision of what you want this kind of deep focus um and this personal space and yeah i think just a very clear vision of some kind of greatness that were some kind of contribution you wish you wish to to share with the world versus posts <laughs> that you yeah tribute to the world you know I think those are very different goals in life and you need a kind of um inner space and inner confidence and like being rooted my one of my mentors always told me like have your feet on the ground firmly on the ground planted kind of like a root that's what I also notice in the younger generation is they kind of many times unfortunately swing from side to side because there's not enough time or space even for you know us in our generation I feel like I wish I had more time and more space to really think and reflect like as you said the artists that you and I admire but now I just can't imagine there's constant always something happening always something to do um, we create things to do for ourselves yes. that we really don't have to. <laughs> we are pedaling. We are like pedaling on a very superficial level. We are just yeah. all the time going from one task to another and doing so many tasks. And it's all before we even started practicing. And then even when you're practicing and you're working on something, you say, oh, I have to keep my phone on because this person is going to call because this is important. And we are tricked to believe that other things are more important than actually our art. And so what is going to be left at the end of it, fast forward five years from now, where that's just going to get worse, is like, what is our reaction? How are we going to deal with it? But what I think is going to happen, and I, and I really hope it happens, because like everything in this modern world, there is going to be a reaction and there is going to be a sort of like, like it, 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 it was the, the, the talk of everyone was, you know, uh, preserving an environment and being vegan because like the animal farming is so awful so which i completely agree with and um uh but i think we will probably have a movement very soon which will be against technology and actually i think that we will always from now on swing to the extremes but wasn't it wonderful where actually technology and things were serving us just enough that was making our life a bit better, a bit easier, that we could communicate, but not over communicate. I just hate this panic that like, if you don't answer someone's email in the same day, that like, you don't like them, that you don't want to do something, that it just becomes this whole drama around nothing. Mm -hmm. And and it's, it's horrific. Uh, before we wrap up, there's one question that I wanted to ask you that is not exactly pandemic related, but that I think is, still a very important topic. Um, you have been very outspoken about your hand injury and experiencing burnout in the past. And as a fellow musician, that's something I admire greatly and I respect you for being open and honest about a very real <laughs> experience. Yeah. Um, why do you think that, especially in the classical music industry, such things, for example, mental health, injuries, burnout, all of that. Why is that so particularly have such a stigma or people have such reservations around talking about those topics, which honestly in other fields, whether it's sports or other forms of music and performing arts, people by now are, are, are much 
have an easier time of discussing these topics, which is, you know, I, I feel like it's a very normal human experience. It's a paradox, isn't it? Because we are normal human beings, but we we are expected not to be normal human beings. We are expected to be these godly creatures who can make these instruments sound amazing. Uh, but then at the same time, we live in a world where all the time we have to prove to everyone that we are normal human beings because everyone needs to know what we are having for dinner on our Instagram feed or, or what, you know, what clothes we are wearing or where we go on holidays and, and all this stuff. So we have to be normal this way, but not quite that normal because if we are too normal, then it's not, not good. So like the amount of confusion this creates is so unbelievable. And, and then you put into the equation injury and real, real issues and problems of our job. Because if you are practicing six hours a day, your fingers are going to scream and cry at you every day. And you're going to push and push and push. And, uh, and then they get used to it. And then they listen to you. And then you go and then you play your hundreds of concerts and you get your recording contracts and and it's like the world is your oyster and it's amazing and it's like everything you ever wanted um but then then our poor little bodies they just have to deal with so much that then sometimes they create issues and if um you are a tennis player everyone feels sorry for you if you are a ballet dancer and you break a little toe then everyone is you know uh, sad for you but despite the fact that you're supposed to be a normal person and share your life even as a classical musician to be relatable because we are not we we have to fight all the time that we are not elitist and that we are not all those things that we are accused of um, um and then you have a, a real problem then you have to hide it so mm. uh so i just thought this is not fair uh and it doesn't help me it doesn't help anyone and when I had my hand problems, uh, when they started to, to, to exist in my life, uh, they came kind of suddenly. And then like, I didn't have a gradual uh, uh, problem with my hand. It just suddenly happened. And it was, I was recording um, an album uh, and I had to learn things two days before the studio sessions. And I had three chamber projects and I was switching between recitals and concertos all at the same time. So when, when my hand started to hurt, actually, I didn't realize at the time that psychologically uh, my hand was tricking me to just stop, to give my body time to actually recover. But it was also the first time that I actually gave the faith of my, of my career to, to other people, to doctors, to, um, uh, to people to tell me what was wrong with me. Um, and, and nobody had the right answer. And I think that that, that experience of, of discovering that there is some sort of a hardware problem somewhere while you're flying really, really high, it's going to land the plane down because you can't risk it. Um, and once the plane lands down until you check every little uh, uh, wire and uh, bolt and uh, screw, you're not going to feel confident to take off again. Uh, so I had to go through all of that myself, really, with the help of a few very dear friends. Uh, and in, in, um, in this process, I discovered that actually I wasn't alone in this. It's just that lots of musicians were suffering in silence. So fast forward um, a year uh, after I've seen every doctor and after I've talked to every musician, I actually realized that I just simply had to make a decision whether I want to play or not. Because at that point, um, I really couldn't play a note. It was very hard. And that was when I found myself alone because you can't go that far uh, in, uh, in asking because it's your own experience and you have to, to deal with it. But then I realized that what I love the most is to play and that music is my life and that I have, I don't remember a day of my life where music wasn't a highlight of that day. Um, and and that's when it all changed. And suddenly, like everything that everyone talked about didn't exist anymore. Of course, I had to build my muscles back and I had to build my stamina and build my repertoire. But, you know, a few months later, I was okay. How unaware we are in our industry of 
uh, of the realities of, of injuring our bodies. I also uh, realized one thing, and that is that when you are not feeling the pressure to be all those perfect things, you are much less likely to injure yourself. Because when you are happy and when your body is filled with wonderful endorphins of happiness, of making music, you can practice for 10 hours. And, and, but when your fingers are moving freely without tension, and it's like, it's, it's not going to hurt. It only hurts and becomes bad if you are under pressure. And if the environment around you creates that pressure, it's not going to help. So I think it's all about community and about really, really being open and, and honest about it and sharing experiences with each other. Yeah, I think that's hugely important. And I agree with you that it starts at a kind of base level with music education, where teachers and mentors should really address these issues. And I've noticed that more in the past year, like during the pandemic, when I wasn't performing as much, I was working with um, young musicians and young violinists. And I can see immediately when they're playing something and if an issue they have is directly related to some pain they're feeling or some tension, or it has nothing to do with their ability or their technique or anything. And oftentimes they're, teachers don't address this. It's something like, oh, you'll get over it or learn to adjust. For me, it's mind boggling that athletes, it's such a given thing, you know, after training, you do something to relax your body, your muscles to help them. And you do, you know, various exercises and treatments. And for musicians, you practice hours and hours, especially at your student age. And then there's like nothing, nothing. to help body <laughs> it was always just so bizarre to me yeah yeah and then and then we are surprised that by the time we are 50 we are like our body is completely <laughs> contorted into some sort of a shape uh, like with everything in life and this goes particularly to young generation of musicians what i'm what i'm saying is that it's to always never ever lose who you are and who you want to be just because of the loudness around us. Because if everyone else is doing it, it might actually be the exact reason why you shouldn't be doing it. Uh, and, and to know that at the same time um, that your voice as an artist is the only voice in the world, and that for that reason, that voice is just beautiful if you take care of it and if you just compare it to its best self. And if you achieve your best self, then that's all you can ever hope for. And, and I just think that no matter what the world around us with, with coronavirus or without, or with insane amounts of technology or without, whatever choices you make, I think knowing that self, and, and and who you are and never losing that that's the biggest challenge and that's the most most important thing in anyone's life today thank you so much <laughs> thank you it's just really really great to see you and uh and i hope nice. it will be in person soon it's been really a pleasure